Oh my god, why must you be so entitled? So, we finally got a look at Cyberpunk 2077, and throughout E3, we got a little more details when they did the uh, whole E3 Coliseum thing, when they had the interview with the developers from CD Projekt Red. And immediately afterwards, and also people's impressions of the whole um, behind closed doors look at a demo of the game, people started to lose their shit. Because Cyberpunk 2077 is first person and not third person, like The Witcher 3. Now, I know that there are some gamers out there that can be really entitled. I mean, really entitled. And they will scream and cry over every little thing. And, yeah, they, they can be pretty whiny. But, the scream and cry over something like this. I mean, okay, The Witcher 3 was a great game. In fact, it was one of the... It, I wouldn't say one of the best games ever made, but I would definitely say that it is up there with the top 10 best games of all time. It's definitely a great game. I love the fact that it was very mature for an RPG, and it looks like that Cyberpunk 2077 is going to follow that same kind of paradigm. It's going to be mature, there will be nudity, there will be harsh language, they're going to, uh, basically, they are, because I played Cyberpunk 2077 in college, I played the pen and paper version, and it is a brutal, gritty world, and CD Projekt Red gets it. They get that this is a brutal, gritty world that this game is set in. And so they're not going to pull any punches. It's going to be in a very adult game. It's not going to be a game for kids. Not because it's going to be full of sexual stuff, but because it's just going to be like the equivalent of an R-rated movie. Or just basically that. It's going to be a video game equivalent of an R-rated movie. But... Gamers are losing their shit over the fact that the game is first person, and I don't think that that's an issue. Now, when you are developing games, you have a budget, not just a monetary budget for development. You also have a resource budget, because you can only do so much with the available resources that you expect gamers to have. Now, there's a resource budget on consoles, which this is going to be on consoles and on PC. Now on PC, you can have a slightly higher resource budget because you would expect gamers to have somewhat more horsepower, CPU horsepower, GPU horsepower, and more RAM. So most game developers will target for, you know, who has, would target that, that group that has that specific hardware, has that specific hardware. Some developers target higher, some developers target higher, like Star Citizen. Star Citizen is targeting for the real high end. Or some play it safe. And depending on what they're trying to do with the graphics, what they're trying to do with the game, they'll target a certain set of specs for, for the PC side. And those have a specific kind of budget because you got, you got to deal with memory, you got to deal with how much video memory a specific card has so if you're if you're trying to push for certain graphical effects you've got to push for you know what kind of graphics card and how much video memory is that game going to require and also how much how many how much um can you use the cpu for everything so you have to balance that out you can't just throw whatever you want into a game and just expect it to work and run perfectly that's why you have to do a lot of fine-tuning and optimization in a game in order to make it run right because you have to work within that limited budget, especially on a game console because a lot of games don't run at 60 FPS because pushing a game to that level reduces the budget that they have, the resource budget that those games have, which means if you want some games to run at 60 FPS, 
the developers are going to have to start ripping out features. They're going to have to start ripping out shaders. They're going to have to start ripping out features and, and, and things in order to make the game run at 60 FPS. Now, it also depends on how efficient the engine is, how efficient their code is. So some games, some games that look really good run at 60 FPS, and some games that look really good only run at 30 FPS. And if they try to push it to 60, they start getting problems. They start getting stuttering, they start getting dropped frames, and they have to reduce the frame rate in order to make it work on that hardware. Even on the higher end consoles, the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro, they have to work within a specific resource budget in order to make the games work right. And those machines, even though they're a more powerful version of those consoles, they're really only as powerful as a, a, a an mid-range entry-level gaming PC. You could build a gaming PC that's as powerful as the Xbox One X for about uh, between four and six hundred bucks. In fact, you could you could build one uh, using the new AMD APUs, the new Ryzen APUs, and it would be the equivalent to a PS4 Pro, just a, just a little over. Because those games, let's be realistic, the games on those consoles are not running with really high res textures they're probably using low to medium textures they're not using the high res textures that you would use on pc on high-end cards like a 1080 ti or or if you're an enthusiast to 1080 ti is an sli which it's becoming less of a thing recently because Developers are sort of leaving SLI behind. Not that not that most developers supported SLI anyway. So you have to work within a specific you have to work within a specific resource budget. And so CD Projekt Red had to make a decision between first person and third person, which would be better. And they didn't have the resource budget at the time to do both. Because, like it or not, it requires a different level of system resources in order to do both first person and third person. That's why a lot of games don't switch between the two, and some games do. Uh, it's why, for a long time, Bethesda games didn't have a third person view. And when they did, they sometimes didn't work right. And so it's, it takes a while to fine tune those things because you're showing more on screen in third person than you are in first person. You're, you're widening the view and that's going to require more system memory. That's going to require more video memory. That's going to require more processing power. You have to weigh that when you're doing software development when doing game development and the way they're pushing for really good graphics in this game and everything that they want to be able to do they said we just didn't have it in our development budget in order to do it we just didn't have it especially on the consoles so the gamers are in a meltdown over the game being FPS. Now, there's several reasons. Now, there are several reasons why they are. Part of it is, might be fear that the game is going to be turned into a, basically, an FPS game, which it's not. It's going to be a full-on RPG. It's been stated several times by the devs that this will be a full-on RPG. Uh, combat will be a little bit like... I heard it described as something like Borderlands, but the enemies aren't quite as bullet spongy. And it's not going to be like the recent Fallout games, which have in the recent Fallout or Bethesda um, Elder Scrolls games, which have sort of 
moved away from that RPG style combat and gone more towards action and gotten rid of a lot of the randomness when it comes to attacks and when you hit and everything that determines that. But this game will will have that. This game will have that. That will it will be a balance between action, being able to move around, dodge probably the you'll probably have some mechanics for leaning around corners, maybe even going under using cover and most probably have this and it will all be in first person. You'll also have melee combat in first person. Now, I wasn't there to see the demo. I wish I was. Uh, if we had if we had income for this channel, I would have been there. I would have gone to E3 to attend, but didn't get the chance. And I hope that we get to see some gameplay soon because I really want to play this game. And I don't think that the game being in first person is going to be much of an issue. You know, yeah, change is scary. People are used to playing a third person game from CD Projekt Red. They're used to that third person view in the Witcher series. But it makes sense for Cyberpunk 2077 to be first person because you're going to be using gun combat and not swords. You're not going to be sword fighting. Now it's going to be third person for vehicles just like uh, GTA. And I guarantee you when, when Rockstar added their first person mode to GTA 5 they had to do a lot of finagling in the code in order to do that. They had to do a lot of manipulations, a lot of extra fine-tuning and everything within their resource budget in order to make that work. That's the reason why it wasn't in the game when it launched. Over time, they may be able to, oh, we can, we can um, refine this code to make this thing work better so it doesn't use as much memory use as much system resources so that we can squeeze in this other new feature here. So I guarantee you that's how GTA 5 got its first person mode. And it's possible that down the road that Cyberpunk 2077 may get that. And there are other things to consider because this is a game that where you will be using ranged weapons, you'll be using guns, and, and sometimes melee weapons, and, and sometimes you'll be able to resolve situations without violence. But you'll have gunplay, and how the mechanics of that work between first person and third person are very different. And that require that you can't just shoehorn that in and expect it to work right. You've got to balance it right. You've got to make sure that it, that it works properly. That takes time. Now, is it possible that the game will get third person or gameplay you build a switch? Maybe after the fact. Maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months down the road, they'll release a patch that will add it. Maybe they'll find a way to refine some of the uh, some of the code and say, oh, we've freed up some resources because we've improved this and this and this and this, so now we can do that third person view that everybody wants. So that's how that works. That how, that's how those things happen. So CD Projekt Red doesn't, doesn't deserve the, 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 the screaming, the ire, the crying, the whining that, that they're getting from some gamers because the game is first person. They really don't. I mean, these are great devs. And these are guys that really care about their community, care about their gamers. They care about delivering a great single player game. And they, they do some excellent games. I mean, The Witcher 3 is any example 
they make great games and they do great stories and they're going to do Cyberpunk 2077 justice. They're going to make a really good Cyberpunk game. Really good. Just stop screaming at them. I'm Mike DeZorch. See you guys next time.